In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Monday of the seventh week of the Easter season, we give thanks to Almighty God for the life, the witness, and the example of St. Bede. The Venerable Bede, whose earthly remains lie in Durham Cathedral, was born towards the end of the 7th century. He was a great priest, a great doctor of the Church, and is remembered for his perceptive and amazing literary works, amongst which we remember, of course, in particular, the ecclesial, ecclesiastical history of England. We give thanks to God for his life and witness and pray that we may follow in that way. We offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass this morning, especially for Ron and Queenie Young, that they may be kept in good health. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who bring light to your church, through the learning of the Venerable Bede, your Holy Priest, mercifully grant that your servants may always be enlightened by his wisdom and helped by his merits. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul made his way over land as far as Ephesus, where he found a number of disciples. When he asked, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered, No, we were not even told that there was such a thing as a Holy Spirit. Then how were you baptized? He asked. With John's baptism, they replied. John's baptism, said Paul, was a baptism of repentance. But he insisted that the people should believe in the one who was to come after him, in other words, Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the moment that Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came down on them, and they began to speak with tongues and to prophesy. There were about twelve of these men. He began by going to the synagogue, where he spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. He did this for three months. The word of the Lord. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Let God arise that his foes be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. The smoke is blown away, so will they be blown away. Like wax that melts before the fire, so the wicked shall perish at the presence of God. But the just shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult and dance for joy. O oh, sing to the Lord, make music to his name. Rejoice in the Lord, exult at his presence. Father of the orphan, defender of the widow, such is God in his holy place. 
God gives the lonely a home to live in. He leads the prisoners forth into freedom. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I leave the world to go to the Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. His disciples said to Jesus, Now you are speaking plainly and not using metaphors. Now we see that you know everything and do not have to wait for questions to be put into words. Because of this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe at last? Listen, the time will come, in fact it has come already, when you will be scattered, each going his own way, and leaving me alone. And yet, I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all this, so that you may find peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but be brave. I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Listen, the time will come, in fact it has come already, when you will be scattered, each going his own way and leaving me alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we think of the numerous times on which Jesus showed his disciples who he truly was, it's sometimes hard for us to understand how they could still deny him, not recognize him fully. Yet here in today's Gospel, we have Jesus with infinite compassion telling his disciples once again that in spite of all of these heavy hints that he has given to them, they will still betray him. They will still run away from him and leave him alone. They will leave him alone on Good Friday. They will leave him alone before the high priest. They will leave him alone before Pilate. They will leave him alone as he hangs upon the cross. For all but John would run away and only he, only he would stand at the foot of the cross. But there is a hugely positive message for us to hear today. For what I believe this gospel is saying to you and me is that we need to remember that even at the darkest hour, as Jesus has just reminded us by his own words in the gospel, he was never entirely alone. In the midst of his pain, in the midst of his isolation, in the midst of his betrayal by those he loved, he knew, he knew that the Father was with him. And he was telling his disciples this before the event, so that when the time of their betrayal came, they would remember his words and find peace and comfort in the knowledge that he understood. And that is just as true for us today. For God knows all the times that you and I will sin. All the times that we will betray Him and deny Him through our words, through our actions, through our inaction. The times when we do not stand up and speak for Christ. Jesus in today's Gospel makes His mercy and His forgiveness clear. And he lets us know that even though we will let him down, he still loves us. He still has compassion on us in our weakness. Just as he had compassion on the disciples in theirs. So let us remember that although there will be times, there may be many times in our lives, when we will walk away from the Lord, he will never walk away from us. 
No matter what we do, no matter how often we fail Him, He will always be there for us. For the compassion and the love of Jesus Christ is everlasting. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through our goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual dream. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of the Venerable Bede be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, God, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly paths with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O San in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O San in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts be brave by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it to and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you all the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, the spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Now, God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Through Christ the Teacher, O Lord, instruct those who feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed be, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ, Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by peace.